Welcome to the Full Spectrum Laser Alignment video for our Pro LF 48x36 and Pro LF 36x24 models. In this video, we'll show you how to align these particular lasers to get the optimum uh, engraving and cutting results. To begin the process, you will need thermal receipt stickers or thermal paper, uh, lens wipes, and metric Allen wrenches. Now I'll go over some of the various components that you'll need to be aware of for the alignment process. Uh, here we have the uh, beam combiner optic, and here we have our laser tube. The laser tube passes through the beam combiner optic onto mirror one, and from mirror one it reflects to mirror two, and onto mirror three. After mirror one we have mirror two optic. Uh, mirror two optic, uh, we have the, the thumb screws for adjusting the uh, angle of the mirror, and then you have the uh, slotted screws where you can uh, translate the mirror uh, for final alignments. And finally we have mirror three. Mirror three directs the energy from the mirror down through the lens and onto the surface. Mirror three has uh, fine adjustment screws so we can uh, send the beam straight down through the center of the lens, which will be done in the last part of the process. Now I'll go over some of the various components that you'll need to be aware of for the alignment process. We have, first we have mirror one, the beam combiner optic, and the beam combiner mount that holds the red diode. And for the alignment process, we're going to want to uh, start by unplugging the red laser diode, which makes things uh, easier to interpret uh, the result-wise. So uh, the laser tube shoots through the beam combiner optic onto mirror one and then reflects onto mirror two. On the other side of the optic, the red light reflects off the other side of the optic and follows the same optical path from mirror one to two and down through the lens. To begin, we need to test fire the laser. To test fire the laser, there are two methods. You can test fire from the touch panel or from the retina engraved software that is connected to the laser. To test fire from the panel, press the FSZ button until you're in fast Z or slow Z mode. In fast Z or slow Z mode, you can press the uh, test fire button, which has a yellow icon of a lightning bolt, to test fire the laser. To test fire from the software, we first want to verify that we're connected to the laser with an IP address and then we can press the test fire button, hotkey F, to test fire. And we want to change the uh, test fire duration. We change it to 5 milliseconds for thermal paper and 7 milliseconds for thermal stickers. It's important to note that either test firing from the software or from the panel, you need to have the lid closed and the water chiller or pump running to be able to test fire. We'll now start by test firing onto mirror one. So I place my thermal sticker on mirror one and I run my finger around the outside of the circle to produce an outline on the mirror. And this way I can tell where the dot is in relation to the circle. So I'll go ahead and test fire. So we produce the dot on the paper. And as you can see, the dot is slightly oval and some of it is uh, white. We're missing a little bit of the dot. But this is all okay. What we're looking for is uh, to make sure that the beam is coming straight through the combiner and not being clipped on the way. So what would, in, what would indicate this is we might have half a dot or a quarter of a dot with a uh, pronounced flat spot. In this case, we would need to adjust the beam combiner mount, but uh, this is rare and we're okay to proceed onto mirror two. The next step is to place thermal paper on mirror two and again, uh, run your finger around the rim of the, the mirror to create an outline circle. Once the paper is placed, we will jog all the way forward closest to the tube. Uh, this is jogging up in the Y direction. You can do this from the panel or the software. So I know how have the gantry in the furthest most position. I'll fire a test dot. And I will next jog all the way down to the position that is furthest from the laser tube. We'll call this location 2. And I'll fire a second test dot. So I've now produced uh, two test fire spots onto mirror 2. I have the upper spot which was fired at the closest location to the tube and the second spot which is a little bit lower, this was fired in the furthest position from the tube. So as the gantry moves down, my dot or my beam is, is pointed down so I need to align it upwards and bring the second dot into the first dot. And to do this I will adjust the screws on the back of mirror one. Mirror one affects the outcome that we see on mirror two. And uh, turning each of these uh, three thumb screws will have a different effect on the alignment. So, for instance, tightening this screw, turning it uh, clockwise, 
will uh, push on this corner of the mirror and cause the beam to tilt to the right. If we, if we tighten this screw, it will push the top of the mirror, causing the beam to tilt down. And this one kind of has a combined effect of pushing the, uh, the beam up and to the right. Basically tightening the screw pushes on that particular corner of the mirror. So our beam is headed straight down and we need to bring it up a little bit. So in this case I'm going to just uh, back this screw out slightly. And we don't want to do too much, maybe just a half a turn at a time and, and refire. So now I'll refire onto my mirror two. And I see that my result is much better. We performed some adjustments on mirror one. We fired a few shots and uh, my paper's starting to get a little cluttered, so it's always a good idea to get a fresh piece of paper and then retest your uh, alignment from front to back again. So I'll go ahead and fire uh, two more shots here again. So I fired my two shots and I have my uh, first shot and my second shot is a little bit to the left of the first shot. So I'll go ahead and on the back of mirror one and adjust the left to right screw. And so I think I'm pretty close. The goal here is to have two shots that are somewhere within the mirror two circle, and the two shots should be uh, indistinguishable. You should not be able to tell the difference between the first shot and the second shot for the most uh, perfect alignment. Uh, location of the mirror does not matter, just as long as the two shots are identical and somewhere within the mirror circle. So we've now uh, aligned the laser from mirror one to mirror two. So we're good up to mirror two, and now we have to work on from mirror two to mirror three. To do this process, I'll put the uh, thermal paper over mirror three, covering the entry hole, and again, run my finger around the entry hole so I have an idea of where the outline of the circle is. And uh, for this process, we focus on left to right. So the, uh, the Y position is irrelevant, so arbitrary for this, uh, for this portion. And we'll go ahead and jog the laser all the way to the left, closest to mirror two and fire a test pulse. And once we have our test pulse, we'll jog all the way to the right, furthest from here two, and fire a second test pulse. So uh, as you can see, I'm very grossly misaligned. I have my uh, First test pulse hitting the hitting the somewhere near the middle of mirror three, and my second test pulse is very low and to the left. To alleviate this, I need to adjust the screws on the back of mirror two. After I perform the alignment from two to three, I will go ahead and jog the laser around to all four corners of the work area. Uh, for instance, I will jog to the upper left, fire a test pulse, upper right, lower right, and lower left. I'll fire test pulses in each of these corners and verify that they're hitting the dead center of mirror three for the perfect alignment. And once I've completed that alignment, I've completed the alignment up to mirror three, and I'll now, now show you how to align from mirror three down to the table. Now I have my two shots, and they're, they're pretty close to being uh, on top of each other. And this is good enough for most applications. Uh, to, to get the, uh, the finest alignment and re reduce uh, beveled edges, we'd want to center this uh, dot on mirror three, so we'd want to be hitting uh, Ideally, we want to hit the dead center of mirror three in every corner of the bed area. So, uh, if it's visible from the paper, my uh, shot is a little bit to the left, and I can actually uh, alleviate this by translating mirror two. To improve my alignment from mirror two to mirror three, I'll be adjusting the thumb screws on the back of mirror two. And the thumb screws are about the same as mirror one. Um, turning, turning or tightening the screw will uh, push on the corner of the mirror so my shot is, is going low and to the left, so I need to bring it to the right by tightening this screw. And then I can bring it up by loosening the top screw. And also, um, 
each screw is kind of related. I can tighten, if I would need to bring the, the beam up, I'm going to tighten both of these screws at the same time, and this one a little bit more to improve the alignment. So I made some changes, and I'll go ahead and test fire and see where I'm at. And I went a little bit too far, as my beam is now high and to the right. So I was in the right direction, but a little too far, so I'll uh, bring it back to the left and bring it down a little bit. Getting better. And now I think I'm pretty close, so again, I will uh, remove the paper and test left to right with a fresh sheet of paper. So I've got my two dots uh, on mirror three pretty close together, but unfortunately they're a little bit left of the hole. To get the best alignment, you want to be hitting dead center of mirror three in all four corners of the work area. Uh, to, now to, to uh, move my two shots over to the right, I can no longer use the adjustment screws. The adjustment screws only allow you to bring the two dots to the same location. But now I would actually uh, translate mirror, the mirror two screws. I would loosen these two screws, slide the mirror back a little bit, uh, roughly uh, less like a sixteenth of an inch or an eighth of an inch back, and then retighten the screws. Now you run into some difficulties when you do this. As soon as you loosen the screws, uh, the angle of the mirror will change ever so slightly, which will greatly uh, alter the alignment that we just accomplished. So, so we basically would uh, loosen the two screws, move it back a little bit, and then uh, realign it to hit it dead center. So now we'll go ahead and plug back in the red dot pointer. Uh, we can do this by just finding the connection and plugging it back together. And we have the red dot pointer, which is shooting onto our paper now. To align the red dot pointer, uh, we simply adjust these three screws on the back where it mounts to. And uh, basically we want to adjust the red dot so that it matches the black dot we produce from test firing. So you can put your paper on mirror three and move it to the lower right position and then simply uh, turn these screws until the red dot matches your uh, invisible black dot that you produced. So I fired a test pulse onto the paper and I have my red dot on the paper but it doesn't quite match exactly. So I'll be turning the uh, alignment screws for the red dot pointer to change that. So I simply uh, turn the screws and then uh, my red dot hits in the middle of the black dot and it's now aligned and you can verify this by uh, jogging around in the bed and verify that it stays in roughly the same location. Now I've made some adjustment to the screws on mirror 3 and I can uh, fire some test pulses to see how straight the beam is coming down onto the table. So I'll jog the table up by pressing a Z up or page up in the software. And I'll bring the uh, table so that my paper is close to the lens and fire a test pulse. And then I will uh, oh. jog the table down approximately uh, four to six inches and fire a second test pulse. And uh, what I'm looking for is the two test pulses are on top of each other. Uh, meaning the beam does not walk to the left or the right or up or down as I move down away from the lens. So to alleviate this, I uh, adjust the screws on mirror 3. So after I made some adjustments on the mirror 3 screws, uh, I want to verify that my beam is coming straight down, not walking, and that it's not clipping the inside of the uh, air assist cone or the side of the lens. So it's important to know whether the beam is clipping or not. Um, if I grossly uh, misalign it, you can see as my red dot starts to go away, that's being clipped. And uh, you'll notice this on the beam, you'll see half of, half of a dot or sometimes a, a small uh, margin of a dot. Uh, another way to test for this is to run a longer vector job with full power and afterwards carefully feel the temperature of the cone to see if it's hot or increase in temperature. The cone should not be hot to the touch at all, otherwise you're losing some energy into the cone and need to re redo your mirror three alignment. That's good. After you performed your alignment steps, you will now notice that you have an even power throughout the work area. And also, uh, performing the mirror 3 alignment down to the table will allow us to have the, uh, the best quality edges uh, with the least amount of bevel.